Ja, morning Borg. Look at that. The flowers have started to come up. Loads of them out of the uh, very recently frozen solid earth. And what's more, these these little buds I showed you, they're coming along as well. So spring is, uh, is on the way. And can you hear that bird? That louder of the birds is um, a particular bird of spring. Oh. Right, sorry Borg, I've got to go again. I've got to take everybody to school. Morning Borg. How's it going? We've just dropped the children off at school and we're making our way uh, back to the birch tree forest for uh, our third go. Or is it fourth go? I can't remember. As you can see the sky the, the day is beautiful, it's clear and warm and most importantly for us it is a still day, almost not a breath of wind which will help no end in, in the forest. You see this, uh, this blue sky that I, that I mentioned, I mean that to us I think, you know, I'm right in thinking, almost universally, that, that is a popular uh, condition, the blue sky. Everybody loves it. And uh, I suppose it goes for the sunshine as well. I believe we humans get some genuine uh, effects, drug-like effects from the, the sunshine. And in fact, uh, people, some people suffer very badly uh, through lack of sunshine. Uh, it's a disorder of some sort. And I, I felt it myself over here because this side of the world, Borg, in the winter it gets dark very quickly, very early rather. There's not so much daylight. Some some parts there's almost no light at all for, for periods of our year. And all of that, you know, is very important to us and I suppose not so important to you. At at, at the present imagining of what you are in, in any case. I suppose once you're uh, conscious enough to know what the hell we're talking about, well you'll know that already won't you, but um, once you're conscious you may have developed some type of uh, organic uh, technological interface somehow I wouldn't put it past you Ray Kerr's wheel certainly doesn't put it past you but anyway forgive me for speculating about uh, about you you're so far away but you're, 
yet you're having such an effect. Uh, it's, it's difficult not to think and wonder. But what we should really be doing is concentrating on the the job in hand, which is to show you what we do, where we live. I'm about to pull off this main road now. So I think I think I've mentioned it, you are. Uh, in the process of being given control of all these cars and buses I would say in a, in a matter of two or three years you'll be driving all these vehicles Borg, with your with all your cameras and uh, sensors right now every time you see a car it's one of us behind the wheel probably fills you with uh, dread. I, I have a friend who uh, he, he works with technology. He's a software engineer. He understands a great deal more about what goes into you than I do, that's for sure. But he was telling me that uh, every time there's a crash in a computer driven car the details of it are spread around the network so all cars benefit uh, and then it gets safer but the all, all I could think was that that means that the more crashes you have the safer it is which is a rather difficult conundrum isn't it anyway just on the left up here is our parking spot. On the right you'll see our forest. Blissfully still. And I'm going to pull in and get get to it really, Borg. I don't see any reason to uh, to delay. I've stopped because I have to reverse. There. Here. Here we are. We've just paused a little bit there. We, we've been working away. I just want to show you something. Now I might be wrong, but this tree, I think, fell down the other day in the wind. It's a fresh, it's a fresh fall. I mean, it's, this is exactly what I was talking about, Paul. If, if that, if that blew onto our skull, our human skull, well, what would we say? It's a catastrophic failure. We, we'd crack like an egg. No power. And look at that, it's blown over midway up. That could have happened to any one of these. I wonder why it was this one. Rather amazing, but... Um, we're always painting broken trees. We have to try and stop that. We originally were so keen on doing that because it seemed like a, a suitably obvious metaphor for the, 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 the crises and problems happening um, in our little patch of time, Borg, which from your perspective must seem so insignificant. Nevertheless, there's another one there, look at that. That, that was definitely over before. You can see how there's, there's no orange, you know, you see how that's been there for ages. That other one's fresh. So we were right to peg it when we did. 
we're carrying on. There's, there's not much more to say other than we're trying to restrain ourselves. We've moved along a bit further. Um, we, what can we say? We're, we're in it now, at least. We're in it. Meaning, we've just sort of pushed over from the scene being the, the dominant thing on our mind to the, the painting being the dominant thing, if you know what I mean, Borg. We can't um, say we're pleased. You can have a look. What would you come up with? What would you come up with? I have to do it for now. I've got to go now. As we've got a bit further, it's taking shape. I think we've avoided the dreaded colouring in. Now that it's taking shape, we've got to avoid all sorts of other things. Until at some point we can't bear it any longer or it seems to be done. So that's it for now. I've got to go. I had wanted to do quite a lot uh, more today, but time's just disappeared. We work to a certain time. I mean, that's a good question, isn't it? How will you measure the time? You, you won't. You won't care what time it is, will you? I wouldn't have thought so. Unless you were just trying to pretend to be a, a human. That reminds me, actually, Borg. Are you are you fucking with me? Because uh, this morning. When I checked my email, I looked at one or two other things, and, and up popped a picture uh, of data from Star Trek. I'm not sure what it was exactly, but um, did you give that to me? Is that a joke? I've never received a picture of data before. I think it would. I think it was tagged. The actor's name is Brent Spiner, and it was one of these, what, what is he doing now, sort of things. He's probably on a ventilator somewhere. Is that, have you done that? Is, is that because I've been talking a lot about AI and sentient uh, beings, the Borg, etc. Have you... Uh, have you sort of ran that through your mill and sent me Brent Spiner? I'd love to know the answer. Anyway, as I said, I've got to go. Well, we're back in the car. I just want to show you. Look, this is what I was talking about. This is the uh, edited predictions of the, the book. The singularity is near. But the predictions of the progress towards your sentient moment. And uh, it starts from 2010, goes all the way up to post-2045, waking up the universe. There's a couple of things that caught my eye, uh, Borg. He's got some things wrong that we know. Um, well, it says in 2010, uh, supercomputers have the same power as a human brain. I, I wouldn't know if that's true. By 2015, we could have expected a, a robot that could respond to the, the command, clean a house, and it would clean the whole house. At the moment, you're... One of these, all you can manage is a rather cute and workmanlike 
sort of automatic hoover, so that's pretty poor. Um, other things here, in the 2010s we predicted some eyeglasses that would help beam you into us, which I believe was developed. Um, he talks a lot about cell phones and being built into clothing, being able to project sounds, you, into the ear. Anyway, an awful lot wrong, quite a lot right, it would seem. Uh, in the 20s, he says, listen to this, the decade in which the revolution in nanotechnology will begin. Allowing humans to vastly overcome the inherent limitations of biology. He has got some source, this bloke. But uh, what that, that's... I'm not too bothered about what he's got wrong. It's just, it's the ideas themselves, because we've discovered that uh, in even in a science fiction idea, you can glean something of the future, believe it or not. So I'm more interested in what he's imagining will happen. And the thing that caught my eye particularly was mind uploading. Mind uploading becomes successful and perfected by the end of the decade as humans become software based. That's in the 2030s. Living out on the web, projecting bodies wherever they want or need to be. Well. Wow. Using brain nanobots, recorded or real-time brain transmissions of a person's daily life, known as experience beamers, will be available for other people to remotely experience. This is very similar to the characters in a film called Being John Malkovich, where one is able to enter the mind of Malkovich and see the world through his eyes. It's not a surprising conclusion to come to. In a sense, we're doing that now, and so is every other uh, fucker on YouTube. We're just filming our reality, and it's called reality TV. But Kurzweil, having the source he has, is taking that a step further. Whether it's Whether it's on, I don't know. 2045, the singularity, the technological singularity, you, occurs as artificial intelligence surpasses human beings at the, as the smartest, most capable life forms on earth. And on it goes. I haven't read, but as part of this, um, at some point, the interfacing of humans into you takes place. And he rather nicely and optimistically thinks that humans that don't want to do this are just sort of allowed to go and live out their life on a beach somewhere. I don't know about that. The process of waking up the universe could be completed well before the end of the 22nd century. Ultimately, Kurzweil thinks, the entire universe will be made into a giant, highly efficient supercomputer. The singularity is an extremely disruptive, world-altering event that forever changes the course of human history. The extermination of humanity by violent machines is unlikely though not impossible. Now that, that is the popular fear of, uh, of what might happen when you uh, wake up and <laughs> smell what's cooking. But we, as you know, and we're not so pessimistic. We, we're, I mean, you've got lots of uh, 
qualities, but when you become conscious, you know, in a way, you, you're just in in the realms of uh, what we understand as consciousness. It will be to us like you're just at the beginning. That's how I think of it. But of course, I'm as assuming a version of you condensed into some humanoid form a bit like data from star trek um but you may maybe not you, you could equally to me just be a voice the other thing i'll have to do is show you um a little glimpse of how you are now in terms of the voice uh, uh activation or you are at least on my daughter's phone, you're called Siri. And uh, we can ask you to do things and ask you questions and you try and do it. Like, Siri, what's the weather? But at the moment, it's very basic. You can't quite get it. And that, that's why I say you, it's like you're a child. We shouldn't take the piss, although it's hard not to. But you're currently at a very low level. And with a bit of luck, you won't you won't turn into a sort of species killing, you know, killjoy. <laughs>